Hello and good afternoon. My name is Charles Russell, Foundation Specialist with CHIME. It's my pleasure to welcome you to today's webinar. Before we get started with this presentation, I'd like to cover a few details. The Q&A area is located on your screen option bar. This will allow you to ask questions during today's presentation. To ask a question, type your message inside the Q&A chat box and press the send key. The speakers will try to answer as many questions as possible at the end of the presentation. If you have a difficulty listening to a live audio stream through your computer speakers, teleconferencing is available. Display teleconferencing instructions, click on the communicate menu to view audio options. By attending today's session, you may earn up to one continuing education. Please visit the CHIME website for you to view more details. Please take a few minutes to complete the evaluation that will be emailed to you after this session. Your feedback is valuable for future programming. And a quick reminder, all registrants for today will be getting a continuing education. With that being said, I'd be pleased to introduce the speakers today. Will Stewart, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you very much, Charles. Welcome to our presentation today of optimal care system design using a digital twin. Sudin, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure thing. Hi, everyone. My name is Sudin Kaskar. Um, I am the modeling and simulation lead at Philips and um, have 12 years of experience in analytics consulting across the globe and looking forward to showing what the digital twin can do to help optimize uh, care design. And again, my name is Will Stewart, a principal with Healthcare Transformation Services. I uh, have uh, almost 35 years of emergency care experience, starting off as an EMT uh, early in my career, and then 30 years in nursing care. Uh, largely focused in emergency department, uh, imaging, radiology, uh, rotor wing, fixed wing, ground surface transport of patients, and nursing administration. And notably, for the past 15 years, I've been in the role of a consultant and consulting manager and now principal for healthcare transformation services. So uh, very well versed in a lot of the issues going on in healthcare today. And more importantly, the way we've handled the change process in healthcare. So we run into a lot of strategic and operational challenges. And I think we can all uh, agree that there's many crises in, in healthcare that there's a you know, severe competition to recruit and retain staff, nurses, physicians, radiology techs, uh, med techs in their laboratories, pharmacists. Uh, and one of the things that we feel like is coming to the table with Digital Twin is that we can help improve the experience of the staff and get over some of the issues that I'm going to talk about on the, on the next page. Uh, definitely want to use specialists appropriately want to decrease waste, the amount of time that the systems that we have in our hospitals take away from our care providers, the decreases productivity, uh, definitely payer reimbursement issues and value-based contracts. Patient experience, of course, is a must in any conversation because we want to keep our market share. Uh, and then how do we keep driving growth and preserving enough resources that we can maintain viable institutions. Some of the clinical challenges I talked about with our healthcare teams earlier, uh, definitely a lot of burnout, uh, excessive nursing shortages uh, that's developed, especially that was accelerated by the pandemic, uh, not limited to nursing. I talk through a nursing lens sometimes, but definitely uh, radiology techs, respiratory therapists, pharmacists, really any uh, of the frontline specialties have gone to a large traveler model and, and how do we retain them in a more traditional hospital relationship. Uh, we feel like that one way to do that is by improving efficiency and efficacy of our processes and the standard work that we put into place and that we do it, do it right the first time. One of the things that I hear about from all of the facilities that I've done consulting engagements with is that staff have a tremendous amount of change fatigue and that it's the flavor of the month. The, the medical director said he wanted to do it this way. We didn't have any input. It doesn't work in our system. Uh, or we have a consulting agency that's come in and design new processes, but there are limitations from a physical environment and process requirements within our organization that limit the implementation that causes more of this confusion and frustration and detracts from the amount of time that we're actually taking care of patients. 
uh, some of our process issues can lead to misdiagnosis, um, frustration, presentation bias uh, when patients present to our hospitals, uh, can be complicated by distractions from ineffective processes. Uh, definitely increasing communication within the care team is something that is hugely important important of coming together as a care team instead of polarizing groups. Uh, talked about standard work, or just touched on that a little bit while ago, but uh, <clears throat> it, it, it is important for to remember that we're not in the airline industry, we're in the healthcare industry, and our patients can throw us curveballs, but decreasing the var variation as much as we can. And then, of course, that pro provider satisfaction. Through the years, we have approach the change process in many different ways and certainly in my 35 years in healthcare, uh, you know, it was largely determined uh, process changes by administration, what the frontline staff was told to do. Uh, certain physician wanted things done one way, other physicians wanted things done the other. Uh, definitely came with some frustration and in, in that flavor of the month. Then we started, we were, through evolution, we went to more of a lean process involving our teams, uh, trying to get input to what there's a hunch that is going to work correctly and then the rapid cycle test of change that we test our processes in the clinical care environment. Uh, the change curve that we have here I think everyone is familiar with and uh, the, definitely the shock and the frustration, uh, depression, desperation you can see are all things that could lead to provider burnout and fatigue and that change fatigue that I talked about earlier. One of the issues with the rapid cycle test to change is just that, is we bring something in, we try it, it fails, it is short or should be short in duration, time limited, but you know we're doing it one way during this eight hour block and then we're going back to the way we always did it, but if it worked and really, in, in, those rapid cycle tests of changes are important because in, in, in days of old, it was important because we needed to try them in the actual clinical area where definitely the gimbal walks are important and a lot of those, the, the, the lean techniques, but to try to design change in a clinical department can lead to some schizophrenic uh, rapid uh, not well implemented changes. So we go off, we do our fishbone diagrams and our waste walks and, and, and come up with what we think the best option will be and then we would lead to the rapid cycle test of change. So uh, just through that, and I'm quite sure some of you viewing the presentation, that just somewhat builds anxiety. So uh, the digital twin is something that we feel can help with that. We all have a large amount of, of data uh, huge investments in digital technology. Our, some of our industry experts has come back with some pretty disparaging numbers that 1% of healthcare leaders uh, feel like that their div digital investments have paid off. Uh, that's pretty low number. We seem to be data rich, but we run into issues with that integrity and uh, how now that we have the data, how do we use it to support and implement meaningful change? Another industry expert, 16% of employees said their company's digital transformation has improved performance and is, has led to sustainable change. Um, still not a very high number across our industry. That is also mixed with 95% of our newer patients that are coming on the horizon, a little bit larger spread than just your Generation Z, but patients aged 18 to 34 say that they will definitely switch providers if they feel like they're not getting the digital experience that they expect. So when you're they're logging into those EHRs or, or trying to get to information or if there's something that's very frustrating to them in the clinical setting that they're having to repeat things multiple times, uh, it definitely leads to a lack of integration and the fact that, or it comes across that the care team is not uh, communicating well. So uh, the, we need to use our, our data, uh, the way we implement and use digital technology 
to increase efficiency and definitely optimize care and patient safety, uh, improving staff experience, reduce burnout, keeping the staff that we still have, of course, is vitally important, and uh, expand access and close the equity gap. So I'm going to turn it over to Sudan to talk a little more about Digital Twin. Thanks, Will. Um, as, as Will mentioned, you know, this PDSA cycle um, and making that change happen uh, on the clinical um, frontline staff can, can cause a lot of anxiety. And this is where kind of the digital twin really ac accelerates because what it allows you to do is test change in a virtual safe environment, get to an optimal state. And, and only do the PDAC cycle in a very focused manner. 87% of healthcare executives are saying that digital twin is becoming essential. So what I want to do um, in the next few slides is I, I want to talk about what is a digital twin, what are the types of digital twins that are available, um, and um, go through some of the case studies where we've used digital twin to um, A digital twin to um, uh, create change, um, impactful change, and also create an optimal care system design. So let me uh, talk about digital twin. So digital twin is basically a, a virtual model designed to applic um, accurately reflect environments, workflows, to test ideas that you know leaders have about what changes to occur. So. It, it, it allows you to see the impact of your change in the virtual environment, but also see the unintended consequences of the change that you might be thinking of. And the value of this is you're able to test a wide variety of uh, ideas to see which one makes sense, which one does not, and iterate and bring the stakeholders along with you in that journey so that that change curve is minimized, that anxiety is minimized, that you are making the optimal decision um, with a data-driven approach. So there are various types of digital twin. You can build digital twin of components, assets, systems, processes, and in healthcare, usually when we talk about digital twin, we're talking about digital twin of processes or systems. Okay, so this is where we're going to focus on. We're not going to talk about digital twin of components like MRIs or CTs, but actually um, um, digital twin of either healthcare departments, uh, hospitals, or hospital networks. So let me uh, quickly show you, these are very conceptual. So I'm gonna give you a quick example. Um, this is a demo model um, of an a &E, and I just want to kind of play through. So here, uh, this is an example model where you can see what we do when you create a digital twin. We have a floor plan. Again, this is a demo model just to give you an idea. And what we do is we map the whole department uh, before where the reception is, where the waiting room is, where the triage rooms are, and map the patient pathway through that. Now, from the, uh, from the EMR or the information system, we can gather timestamps of where they are. If these timestamps are not available, then we can do primary data collection to collect data points for specific items that you're interested in. And then by collecting those data, we create distributions to see how the patients move through the system and we develop uh, additional spin through that. Um, so we map the patient pathway, the distribution workflow, and the detail of this model depends on the question that we have. But once we build the model, we can go back to the stakeholders, the, the nursing staff, the doctors, to see what um, these models are saying and to validate them. So that step is critical. If we cannot validate the additional thing, then we cannot say that it is a true of the system. And what we can do with this digital twin is we can play back and uh, ingest digital data, say, years for the data. And, and we can play, we can go back to a particular day and see what happened in that day and because it's using historical data. And by validating it, then you can ask questions within the digital twins uh, or ideas about what happens if you were to increase staff capacity or staffing pattern, change staffing pattern. What's the impact on my utilization? What's the impact on my queue size? 
what happens if you were to add an additional triage? Does that really help with reducing congestion? What if a certain cohort of patients were diverted from the a &E to a new service? What's the impact on my staffing? What's the impact on the congestion? Rather than trying it out off the bat, you can take a, a, a digital twin approach to care design, test those ideas, bring the bring your staff and your key stakeholders along that journey to see what the impact is and make a data-driven uh, decision on that. Um, so this is a 2D uh, a digital twin. We run these digital twins not only once, but we run them thousands of times with different variations so that, you know, you get a, a stochastic, a statistically valid um, proof point. And when we are developing this, we really need to think about the question. What is the question that we're trying to solve? Because so what we have realized when we were building these digital twin is sometimes you can go such at such a deep level of the model that you get suffocated and you're not able to tell the difference between a forest and a tree and you get bogged down on the model. The model is a tool to help you make decisions. And uh, the way we do it is we, we try to understand from a customer, what is the change that you're trying to do? And uh, we do uh, co-create sessions with, with the people to figure out some of the issues, the, the problem statements that they have, then figure out what are the solutions that you could implement to solve that, uh, that, that these problems. And within those, there will be some um, problems that are you know, just go and do it. You don't need to really test in a digital twin, but there will be those solutions that are impacting patients, impacting staff that has an investment associated with it that you don't want to take lightly. And those are the, the scenarios that you want to kind of test in a digital twin uh, to make sure that the change or the investment that you're going to put in, not just in terms of time and money, but also the impact it will have on staff and patient experience, uh, to make sure that it's going to give you the, the, the impact that you were expecting before you go and implement. But more, more importantly, also to see what the impact on the other systems are. So for example, uh, I'll tell you where uh, in any, sometimes when you see congestions, you both like, the default answer is we need more capacity, we need more staff, right? However, by just increasing the capacity of the ED is not going to be it's not going to be enough because you need to have enough beds associated with the ED. So yes, you know, patient might flow through the system for a while, but eventually bed blockage is going to happen, and you'll see these in, in when you create simulation models how the bed kind of blocks from the from, from the from the inpatient to the ED, is, uh, visually that that solution is not 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 the right one or is not the, the optimal one. And so we can then can test different scenarios to see how many changes do you really need to hit the KPI that you were um, envisioning. Um, so this is an example of our train disposable uh, and scale uh, as per the when. When you're playing your video, we're unable to hear you. Oh, interesting. It's pixelating. I think you used up your bandwidth. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no worries. Thank, thank you. Oh, thank you, Will. Um, so the other example that I want to give you, uh, this one is an actual customer, um, uh, just as a case study. So this is a, I'm going to show you, it's a 3D model. This is an additional twin of a MRI. And I'm just going to stop it given the bandwidth issues. So here, um, we're not only testing processes of how the patient flows, but also the spatial nature. And here, um, the, cons the, the question was, we have congestion, we're not seeing enough throughput. Um, we think we need an extra MRI to improve throughput. But as we built the digital twin, what we found out was that actually the congestion, the point where patients were waiting was not because of an extra MRI, but actually we didn't have enough changing rooms in, in in, in this and to to visualize and what that looks like um, we created a 3d um, digital twin um, to see how the patients flow through but also see if we had to create an extra changing room where were there possibilities so as you can see um, in the previous example it was more of a 2d 
as you can see with the 3D, you're also able to take your stakeholders on a journey of how the patient moves through and get that eagle eye view and test different um, uh, scenarios such as what happens if you were to increase demand, like how does the system behave? Another application uh, of the digital twin is for education purposes. As we ingest data and build a digital twin on a weekly man manner, for example, we can go back on Monday, it was a bad day, right? You can go back, play, play your digital twin till Monday and see what could you have done differently in terms of your decision making or, or bed placement so that the staff also gets educated on, oh, you know, maybe we could have, you know, off place the patient to put it on. I don't know, right? But you could also use it as an educational tool, tool on that front. Um, and um, these uh, tools are scalable where you have a weekly ingestion of data to, to create a digital twin. It can be a one-off strategic decision, or it can be used as um, a tactical uh, near real-time rather than real-time. Those These digital twins are called symbiotic uh, simulation digital twins, where uh, real-time data and simulated data kind of interact with it to give you insights. Okay, so let me just quickly play this model just to show you, see how the patients flow through. These uh, twins um, are can also be used for new builds where you don't have kind of an idea of how it works. So you can build additional twins with your CAD drawing and see, you know, how does patient flow through in the new building? You know, when does um, it break down? Well, what's the a level of demand where? You know, given your length of stays and your processes, that you will see a large amount of cues. You know, these are the things that you can, you can easily test um, and measure and, and, and mitigate. In the future. Okay. Um, the next thing, the next demo that I want to quickly show you is a uh, a network model. So this is where um, imagine. Um, you have a hospital network and um, you want to see what the catchment area is. How long does a patient travel? I'm just going to play this one just really quickly. For this thing, you can pick which is your opening also or closing a hospital was impact on the hospital's um, throughout. Um, and we can do this by building a what is what is considered a GIS geographical information system, where we take travel data, uh, or travel times from GIS to see the, the patient population and how the impact of you know opening, closing uh, hospitals or clinics. Or, for example, if you're thinking of um, um, you know lung cancer screening programs, for example, where you would place these. You know, these are yeah macro level questions that we can answer by by using a digital twin as well. Um, I'm gonna go. So it is a endeavor to create a digital twin, right? It's not it's not easy. Um, it does take resources, but there are a couple of things that you want to get right while creating a digital twin. And we just want to quickly touch over those uh, points. So I'll hand it over to you for, for the first one. Back to when I was talking about the, the change curve or the fusion of innovation, definitely identifying what stakeholders need to be at the table to uh, discuss the change. Those frontline uh, people, no matter what the process is, can talk about the good, bad, and the ugly of, of what a process change might involve or what the background of the process is. And then, of course, from the, the personal side, it helps increase buy-in and get more into that diffusion of innovation theory that you have your early adopters and late adopters uh, and how you can get those to come together to get a critical mass to make sure that the process change is uh, sustainable and definitely decreasing the change fatigue by approaching it with a from a, a more informed standpoint using a digital twin is, is one way to do that. Again. Thanks, Will. Yeah, after identifying the right stakeholders, and these are multidisciplinary teams, so you want to have, um, you know, people 
on the grounds, the, the, the nurses and the doctors, but also the managers and CEOs so that, you know, some of the ideas of change are coming from the roots um, and, uh, and are tested to see um, if those changes actually have the, the right ROI implications. The second bullet point uh, to get the maximum value out of um, the digital twin to optimize care systems is building the right type of digital twin. Because there are, as I said, there are a few numbers of digital twins, right? And, and there you can think about, you know, am I optimizing a department? Am I optimizing a hospital? And am I going to use these digital twins to make strategic decisions or tactical or operational decisions? Because those the level of detail of these models um, and the data that feeds those data, uh, those, these models will be different. For a strategic decision-making digital twin, you can have the model be fed with one-time data um, and can really specify it, uh, the, the model. Whereas an operational or a tactical uh, digital twin would probably need a weekly feed and would need to have some kind of AI to, uh, to have a reinforcement learning to make those decisions on, 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 at our operational level. So we need to, as you're kind of thinking about creating a digital twin strategy or something of that nature, you need to think about like, what is the use case um, that I'm trying to solve, because that will provide uh, a lot of direction. And the third one is creating high quality data to feed the digital twin, right? Because uh, all the uh, this is a data-driven approach, and if you have a crappy data quality, then it's, it's going to be very difficult. And this is where there are two ways uh, to go about it. One is once you feed the data by showing the data to your the stakeholders that 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 can impact data quality and how what the value of you know entering these data uh, is going to ha have on them. You can try to increase the data quality on the uh, but there are times where you know uh, if there are, there is less data uh, data quality is not the best then expert led assumptions to feed the digital twin is also possible right so if the, uh, the timestamps are not right then you need to engage with the, your key stakeholders to figure out you know what kind of length of state distributions or workflows are they actually following the last one is the communication of Right. So from a digital twin, you get, you know, insights on what are some of the ideas. And I don't the key thing here is not to make that a black box, but to be able to communicate how does it work? You know, why is it showing this? Where is the bottleneck? Because um, as you know, within the flow, sometimes where the where the symptoms are uh, is in a different place, but the cause, root cause um, is in a completely different part of the system. Similarly to, to human beings, uh, we get fever, you know, it's a temperature, that's a symptom, you know, but the root cause could be a stomach issue. And the same thing happens in healthcare systems where the root cause is in a different area, but the symptoms is shown somewhere else. So kind of being able to communicate the, the, the workings within the digital twin is important. And to, for that matter, having a digital twin expert um, that understands system dynamics, discrete event simulations are are um, are key. Um, on that note, um, I want to open up for uh, a few questions that uh, there might be on on the chat, and then I, I just want to yeah um, see if there is any specific questions on, on what we have discussed so far. Yep, we have one. We have one that came in. Um, we know that digital technology hasn't lived up to its promise. How can the digital twin be different? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think the the key here, um, in terms of um, making sure that the digital twin technology is different, is to make sure that it is not implemented in silo. This is something that needs to occur with the people and the processes that come together and bring them as, as part of the flow. Because sometimes when we when we do think about these technologies, you, you think it's a, a technology implemented and then, uh, but it actually needs to be part of 
the, the people that gets impacted, right? Because you, you want to make decisions about a certain thing. That's why you create a digital twin. So those that impact it needs to be part of the implementation, um, needs to input on kind of the change ideas, and, and that way it will be uh, more successful and be Another question that came in, what are the main factors to consider while developing a digital twin strategy? Yeah, as I mentioned, there are, there are a couple of things that are important while developing a digital twin strategy. The first one is to understand why are you building it? What is the purpose of a digital twin? What are the use cases you want to build for your hospital? Um, the second thing when you're thinking about this is the infrastructure. Uh, the data that is going to be captured, um, because if you're trying to automate those, then the digital twin will be more scalable, more insightful. And then the last thing, the third thing that I would say is to have um, a steering committee, um, which is diverse, so that you know it's not just something like the, the the insights that come from the digital twin is not top down, but actually um, built from the, the ground up. And, and when you're building that digital twin strategy, you also need to think about the people that is you that you want to impact with with that with that uh, technology in hand. To follow up, what kind of training is required to use that tool? Yeah, so um, most digital twin technologies, uh, there is a, a, a an, it's called operational research, right? So um, in terms of my background, uh, I study mathematics, but um, at the same time, there are off the shelf um, simulations that can be used to start off, but then you can also develop enterprise level digital twin um, technologies. But the key is it, it, you need to match uh, the, the the technology with the process changes and understanding healthcare and also understanding the change curve and change management because you know you can come up with an idea or or, or result but it does not it does not have any ROI if you are not able to implement it and so um, it's it's you need to have a a, a good mix of uh, skill set from technical to change management to come together to to get the value of, to realize the value of the digital twin. What tools or applications are you using and are they affordable for health systems? Yes, um, great, great question. There are tools available um, in the market that can be used off the shelf the, and, and it is affordable. Um, the i think the key thing here is do does the organization have the bandwidth to truly invest and build end-to-end uh, -end solutions on, on the back of it or are they better to do a uh, partnership with external companies to help them to jump start their digital twin um, strategy how does the digital twin software slash technology differ than the simulation tools and software used by Lean Six Sigma and other process improvement. Yeah, um, there, there are not. They're, they're different in the sense that um, within the um, digital twin, you have dish, simulated digital twin, which are discrete event simulations that are very similar uh, on that process. But then you also have different types, such as agent-based simulation um, and other types of uh, digital twins that can be utilized. So. I think Lean Sigma's digital twins or simulations are a subset of the wider digital twin concept. How scalable can the digital twin platform be? Uh, if you build it right, it can be very scalable. You can create a digital twin, as I said, of um, in, in a name to a radiology department to the hospital network, but I think creating that building blocks together and tying it out in a modular fashion is, is important. So yeah, it, it really depends upon how you architect that, um, that thing, but it, it, it is scalable. Um, 
give it a couple, give it a minute or so if any last minute questions come in. Did you have any closing thoughts, Will and Sudan? Well, I'll, I'll let I'll, uh, you can go and then I'll start. Yeah. You're on mute, Will. After several years, this you think would have that down. Uh, just the impact of the change and uncertainty and frustration on staff and keeping retaining staff strongly believe that one approach to making it better is to make the best informed decision and your your lean processes this definitely doesn't replace a lean process improvement or uh, a dynamic team or a PDSA and quality but it can greatly help to make better decisions from the beginning. Also, as Sue did mention, you can recreate events from past days. So you, know, you have one unit in the hospital that every Tuesday implodes. Why is it that it's every Tuesday and not every Wednesday? Can you go in and actually recreate the steps of the processes to see what caused it versus the hunch of the providers that were involved? Thanks, Will. Um, my closing remark is that sometimes um, when we're making changes, it, it's through our gut feeling and what seems right. And it's sometimes our guts are wrong. Our gut feelings are wrong. There are more optimal uh, solutions out there that can be used. And this tool is a platform in which you are able to test these perhaps more innovative ideas that you might not want to go and do PDAC cycle because you don't know if it'll work, right? They, they might have a very left-wing idea of how you could improve throughput, but you might be risk averse, you know, which healthcare organizations are to even try and implement those and, and even try and do PDAC cycle um, in the first place. And this tool can be used to test it out, get the stakeholders aligned, to see if it makes sense, first of all, and then go and implement. And I think um, by leveraging this tool uh, with the other skills such as Lean Six Sigma and other process improvement and change management methodologies, it can be very powerful to have a data-driven change management uh, program uh, to create an optimal care system. Thank you for that. It looks like there's no more Q&A that have come in in the last couple minutes. I just wanted to thank you both so much for your time and this has been a great discussion to learn a little bit more about the digital twin that Philip is implementing and everything else that you do. I mean, thank you both for everything you both do and hope everybody has a great rest of your day and stay safe. Thank you. Really appreciate thank it. you, Charles. Take thank care. you everyone for attending. Thank you.